y equals the modulus of 2x minus 3 and we're given a little sketch i would always advise like drawing a sketch in this situation anyway just to set out what is going on state the coordinates of the points of intersection with the axes so here this is where x is 0 and therefore i'm going to get the modulus of minus 3 i'm going to get 3 therefore uh, let's that's going to be the y axis intersection or the y intercept, I suppose I could say that's going to be 0, 3. And then this one here is when y is 0, so it's when 2x minus 3 is 0, and therefore it's when x is 3 over 2. It's like when you solve a, a quadratic equation, you factorize it, and then you, you do the same sort of thing. Okay, there we go, that's a good start. Given that the graphs of y equals modulus 2x minus 3 and y equals ax plus 2 have two distinct points of intersection, determine the set of possible values of a. Okay, this is stepping up in difficulty now. It's a modulus equation, sorry, modulus question, but there's like an a here for the gradient, and we're not just solving an equation, we're finding where we have two different points of intersection. Okay, so, um, yeah, we're not told an awful lot. We need to think about this. So we know for sure that the straight line is going to go through 2. Okay, so I think as a starting point, it's just worth bearing in mind when we're going to get two points of intersection. Of course, when it's here, we will. Uh, yeah, when it's here. But you can see as we bring it down, it's going to be this point here where we only get 1. So here it would be 2, and suddenly we only get 1. Now, is there anywhere else where we might only get 2? So that's a negative gradient. Wherever we have a positive gradient, we're going gonna to manage to get 2, aren't we? Aha, unless it's too steep and it never meets it again. So these are two lines that we need to consider. Now this line I can actually write down straight away. It's going to have the same gradient as the y equals the modulus of 2x minus 3 when x is greater than 3 over 2, which is when it's equal to 2x minus 3. So this here will be y equals 2x plus 2. And what I'm trying to say is if something was steeper or that gradient is it's only going to meet once whereas if it was like this it's definitely going to meet twice because it's always going to go through this one so so that's going to work well i'm just going to write a few words for this if if a greater or equal to two then it will only intersect once okay because at the moment these are parallel so i.e they can net these two can never intersect and then when it goes steeper it's not gonna intersect again either so there we go that's like a that is a condition that we've got if it's a uh, greater or equal to two it will intersect, intersect once so we're interested in where it's where there are two so we need we need that a is less than two for a start all right let's carry on let's now focus on this line here Okay, so here I know this, so what I'm trying to say is when the gradient becomes too negative, it's also not going to hit it twice, because let this part of the line any, any go, uh, starts here. So this is the, the second kind of condition I need to think about. Um, so hit once. when touches at x equals 3 over 2. So I know it goes through 0, 2, and I know it goes through 3 over 2, 0. Okay, I'm going to kind of come down here now. So therefore, the gradient at this point is going to be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 
uh, I'll stick this, this one in first, 2 minus 0 over 0 minus 3 over 2. That's going to become 2 times minus 2 over 3 or minus 4 over 3. Actually, that's all I'm interested in, isn't, isn't it? When it's, so when it's, um, so I require the gradient to be bigger than that. And therefore, I'm, I'm done. I just need to put it all together overall minus 4 over 3 is less than a which is less than 2. So I just want to talk about this a little bit more because I think this is quite tough. I'm like I'm draw I've considered different lines that touch that sorry that go through this point 2 and we can see loads of them we have these two points of intersection. But I kind of kept increasing the gradient. See, that's still going to have two points of intersection until I got to when it's parallel, because that will always go through. The, it'll go through this line here, um, but it's not going to go through the other one. And when it's deeper than that, it's also not going to go through. So that that got me this idea that a is greater or equal to two for for um, one point of intersection. So when it's less than two, we could potentially get two. So then I looked at the, you know, if we keep uh, reducing the gradient, we still get two. Okay, but there's this point here where it just touches in one place. And then when we go even steeper than that, it's only going to touch in one place. So I then found the gradient between 0, 2 and 3 over 2, 0, these, which was what part A helped us find. We saw that at that particular point, the gradient was minus 4 over 3. So the gradient has to be bigger than that to get these two points of intersection. Bring those two pieces of information together, and we've got our result for part B1. Now, when some, when some people learn about solving modulus equations, often people are told, oh, just, just square the brackets and, and you'll be okay. But this is one example why it's, it's actually so much better to learn how to solve equations using graphs, because, you know, you can just sort of get a feel for it, understand what's happening, and I hope my explanation is clear. I did try and have a go at this one by squaring them, and I just, I don't know, I kind of got actually got a bit lost. I thought, uh, what is even going on here, looking at the discriminant and so on. I think it, yeah, I think the problem was that when you square it, you'd lose aspects of the modulus. And uh, I think what I got was that when a was minus 4 over 3, I got uh, zero points of intersection. It was just it was just harder to get this par parallel bit because of the nature of the problem. So I guess what I'm saying is, yeah, I would strongly advise not. You might never have done it, but don't square these modulus equations when you're solving them. Instead, like learn how to appreciate the graphical um, nature of solving them. Okay, I, up to you overall, but I I'd like to see a solution that that uses that effectively here because I think this although. I know I'm going on a little bit here. You know, this is quite complicated, but um, at the end of the day, it's like once you understand where the two lines are, it's not too bad to find out the lines and then realize that you're looking for the A values between those these two extremes. All right, anyway, the X coordinate. So now we're trying to find the X coordinate of the points of intersection giving answers in terms of A. Okay, brilliant. So this is this is bringing back in the sort of normal nature of, of solving these equations, B part 2. Okay, so y equals the modulus of 2x minus 3 is going to equal 2x minus 3 when x is greater or equal to 3 over 2, and then minus 2x plus 3 when x is less than 3 over 2 because when it's less than x at 3 over 2 the thing inside is going to be negative so we then put a negative in front to make it positive that's yeah that's this sort of standard stuff on modulus so let's look for the solution when x is greater or equal to 3 over 2 assuming there is one then i'm going to get 2x minus 3 equals ax plus 2 Okay, and we're trying to solve this in terms of a, so I can rearrange it. 
2x minus ax is going to equal 5. Factorize out that x. So 2 minus a times x is equal to 5. And therefore x is 5 over 2 minus a. And I found one of the points of intersection. Now it's just the other one when x is less than 3 over 2. So now I get, I'm going to write 3 minus 2x, same thing as uh, two, minus 2x plus 3. Okay, this time I'm going to get 1 equals ax plus 2x or a plus 2 times x and factorizing it straight away. So x is 1 over, oh, I'll write it as 2 plus a just to link in with what I did there. Okay, those are our two answers in terms of A.